Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number eight from the International A Level Edexcel um, Pure, Ma Pure Mathematics P1 January 2022 paper. This question here is about straight line graphs. It says a line L1 has equation 2x minus 5y plus 7 equals 0. Find the gradient of line 1. Well, what we know is when an equation is expressed in the form y equals mx plus c, where y is the subject of the equation, then the coefficient of x will be the gradient and the constant will be the y-intercept. So in order to find the gradient of this, we want to make the y the subject. So we have 2x minus 5y plus 7 equals 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the y term positive. So I'll write this as 2x plus 7 equals 5y adding 5y to both sides and now I'm going to divide both sides by 5 but I'm going to divide them both sides by 5 such that I have two separate terms so this is 2 fifths of x plus 7 over 5 is equal to y so y equals 2 fifths x plus 7 over 5 therefore we can say that the gradient is equal to 2 fifths so we can say the gradient is equal to 2 over 5 that's the gradient of this line L1 now part B. It says, given that the point A has coordinates 6, negative 2, and the line L2 passes through A and is perpendicular to line 1, find the equation of line 2, giving your answer in the form y equals mx plus c, where m and c are constants to be found. Okay, so now what we know is that the gradient of line 1, the gradient for line 1 is 2 fifths. So that means the gradient for line 2 is going to be the negative reciprocal because it's perpendicular. When two lines are perpendicular, then the product of their gradients is negative 1. So therefore, if the gradient of line 1 is 2 over 5, then the gradient of line 2 is minus 5 over 2. A negative reciprocal. Okay, so you change the sign and you flip it upside down. And it goes through the point A, which has coordinates 6, negative 2. So if I want to write down the equation of the line now or find the equation of the line, I've got two different methods I could use. One of them is using y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Um, another method you could use, I'm going to show you both methods because a lot of students, especially at IG level, they, or, or just AS when they've come, up, come out of IGs, they like to uh, use this other method. So I'll, use, I'll just show you both methods. Oh, what happened there? That disappeared. m times x minus x1, sorry. And I can use the form y equals mx plus c. All right, I'll, show you, I'll show you this method first. So the x1 and the y1 refer to the points, the x and the y coordinates of the point that you have. And the m refers to the gradient. So you have y minus minus 2 is equal to m, which is negative 5 over 2, times x minus 6. Okay, now what I can do is I can, as I want to write it in the form y equals mx plus c, I'm not going to, like what I would do, I would maybe multiply by 2 to get rid of the fraction. Here, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to expand this bracket as minus 5 over 2x plus, now minus 5 over 2 times minus 6, they cancel, give you minus 3, so that's minus 15. So it's plus 15. It's going to be plus 15 because a minus and minus gives you positive. 5 over 2 times 6 is 15 because it's like 5 times 3, which is 15. Um, and now I have to subtract 2 from both sides. So y equals minus 5 over 2x plus 15 minus 2, which is 13. Subtract 2 from both sides, sorry. So that's 5 over 2x plus 13. So y equals negative 5 over 2x plus 13. That is the equation of line 2. That's the equation of line 2. Uh, showing you the other method, it's almost, I mean, it's basically it's very similar. You're going to replace the y with minus 2. And you replace the m with minus 5 over 2. And the x with 6. And we can use that to find what c is. So as I said, this cancels with this, giving you 3. So you have negative 2 equals negative 15 plus c. Therefore, c is equal to negative 2 plus 15 which is 13, so we can say y equals the gradient, which is negative 5 over 2x, plus the y-intercept, which is 13, and we have the answer. So both ways are perfectly fine. 
All right, but, but I prefer using this method, especially when I have to express the answer in the form of this type of thing, where a, B, a, AX plus B, A, Y plus C equals zero, where A, B, and C are all integers. I prefer using that method in those cases, especially, um, because at this stage you can multiply both sides by this fraction and then you end up with integers. Um, but both methods are perfectly fine. All right, so that's question B done. Now we're going to go on to part C. Okay, part C says the lines L1 and L2 intersect at the point M. It says using algebra and showing all your working, find the coordinates of M. So basically we have to take these two equations and solve them simultaneously. Now for us to do that, what I think might be sensible here um, is to rewrite this in the form. I could use substitution. I could replace y with minus 5 over 2x plus 13 and then I have just something with x in it. But that's going to have a lot of fractions to do with because that 5 won't cancel with that 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to say line 2 can be rewritten if I multiply everything by 2 as 2y equals minus 5x plus 26. Just multiplying everything by 2. All right, so I end up with something like this. And line 1 has the equation 2x minus 5y plus 7 equals zero so let's just rearrange these equations let me rearrange line two a bit more so i can write it as 5x plus 2y minus 26 equals a zero 5x plus 2y minus 26 equals zero now i can try to solve these two equations simultaneously what i'm going to do is i'm going to take let me just make a bit of space here write it up there what i'm going to do is i'm going to um, I could either make the x's the same or I could make the y's the same. It really doesn't make much of a difference. So I'll make the y's the same. I'll multiply this by 2 and I'll multiply this by 5. Then that will become 10y and that will become 10y as well, but opposite sides. So this is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4x minus 10y plus 14 equals 0. And here I'm going to have 25x and I'm going to have plus 10y. And I have 5 times the negative 26, which is minus 130, equals 0. And now I can solve these equations by, um, I can add the two equations together. Can add, okay, so when we add these two equations, we're going to get 29x, that will be plus 0. You'll have minus, that's 116, um, equals 0. So I have 29x equals 116. So x equals 116 over 29. So x equals... So you have 116 over 29, which gives us 4. So x equals 4. And now we want to find what y is. And y is minus 5 over 2x plus 13. If my mem Yep, that's minus 5 over 2x plus 13. That's right. So what we can do here is we can replace the x with 4 so this comes with that gives you 2 minus 5 times 2 is minus 10 minus 10 plus 13 is 3 so y equals 3 so the coordinates of m should be 4 3 okay let's have a look if that actually works uh, we've found m is 4 3 let's see if that actually makes these equations both of them true just to be sure so you have 2 times 4 which is 8 minus 5 times um, 4 which is 20 plus 7, okay, um, 5 times 3, sorry, it's 15. Okay, 5 times 3, 15. 8 plus 7 is 15. 15 minus 15 is equal to 0. That's right. And we have y, which is 3, equals minus 5 over 2 times 4 plus 13. And that's correct. That's minus 10 plus 13 equals 0, um, equals 3, sorry. So we have... Um, both of those, the, the, that, that value of x and y make both equations true, so we have found the correct solution. So you should always try to check using, um, you know, making sure both equations, the original equations, have been satisfied by that point, and it has. So therefore, though that we know the coordinates of m for 3. Then it says, given that the diagonals of a square a, b, c, d meet at m, find the coordinates of the point c. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a little square just to make it clear to us what we're dealing with here. So you have a, I'm going to draw a square. Okay, so here we have a square. So let's say that um, 
we know that the point A is 6 minus 2. So let's say the point is over here, 6 minus 2. Okay, that would be somewhere over here compared to M. And um, it says the diagonals of the square meter M find that the, of the square ABCD meter M. Now what we've just found is um, the diagonals of the square would be these two lines. So A is the point on the square, and we know the line L1 passes through A. And this is the other diagonal of the square. Okay, so we know A is the point 6 minus 2. Okay, and the equation of uh, line 1, okay, the diagonal, okay, the line uh, line two passes through a okay so this is line two and it's perpendicular to line one okay so we know that that's what it told us so line two passes through a and is perpendicular to line one and both line one and line two meet at m so we know line the point m is over here now we got to find the coordinates of the point c now if this is the square a b c d whichever way you go around it doesn't matter but this would be a this would be b this would be c and this would be d so we want to find the coordinates of C, which would be opposite, the opposite corner to A. All right. Now what we can see is M is the midpoint of AC. M is the midpoint of AC because the diagonals bisect each other in A square. All right. And the two diagonals are of equal length anyway. So I need to find the coordinates of C. And I know the coordinates of M are 4, 3. I know the coordinates of A are 6, minus 2. Okay, so it's, it's something like this. I have A, which is 6, minus 2. I have the midpoint, which is 4, 3. And I have to find the coordinates of C, which I'm going to call X and Y. Now, there's a number of ways of doing this. Uh, probably the, the algebraic type of method, which most people would go for, is where you just think of this as the midpoint the midpoint is when you have the average of the x and the y coordinates and you know that's how you find the midpoint of those two points so i could say that this is the midpoint okay between these two so i can say x plus 6 over 2 is equal to 4 so i have x equals or x plus 6 is equal to 8 so x is equal to 2 so that's going to be the coordinates the C coordinate of the end point. And then I could say minus 2 plus y over 2 is equal to 3. The midpoint of these two points is, is going to be 3. So negative 2 plus y is equal to 6. So y is equal to 6 plus 2, which is 8. Okay, so that's going to be um, 8 there. So that's 2 and 8. Those are the coordinates of C. We can also do it in another visual way which I personally prefer. So I'll just show you how to do that. You could say that from A to M, you have to, for the X coordinate, you have to go down by two. So therefore, from, from M to X, you have to also go down by two. So four minus two is two. And from minus two to three, you have to go up by five. So therefore, from three to Y, you have to also go up by five because it's the midpoint. So you know, the, the distance between those two is going to be the same. So from 3 to there, you have to go up by 5. So 3 plus 5 is 8. So that's uh, an easier way, I think, of finding the answer. This is the algebraic method of doing it. And that's the kind of like visual kind of way of doing it. So there we have the answer to part D. Now for part D, we have to understand a few things that the diagonals of a square bisect each other. So that means M is the midpoint of A. C and we know the coordinates of M and the coordinates of A and we're finding the coordinates of C. Okay, so there's the answer to part D of this question. Um, that concludes this um, question, question number eight. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area at the end of the video, uh, as should um, questions to do with straight line graphs from P1. They should be found in this um, playlist over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.